I'm Jasmine, just turned 22, and today I've got a tale that'll send shivers down your spine. See, I'm the kind of gal who finds solace in solitude, especially when I'm feeling down. So, there I was. One day, deciding to venture outside for a solo picnic in my secret sanctuary. It's a hidden gem, nestled amidst majestic mountains overlooking a serene, untouched lake. The air? Pure as it gets, no factories to muck it up, and human sightings rarer than a four-leaf clover. Yep, you could say I've got the only key to this place. I laid out my stuff, ready to unwind. As I settled, I pulled out a whistle. There's something about the echoes of my whistles that gives me a peculiar kind of joy. Can't quite explain it, but it's like my soul sings along. So I started to sing, to whistle, to just let loose. The day unfolded better than I could have ever imagined. The sun began its descent, painting the sky in hues of amber and crimson. It was time to wrap up and head home. I packed my things and made my way back, feeling lighter than I had in a long while. It was like this place absorbed all my worries, all my anxiety, and left me with nothing but joy and happiness. Now let me tell you, I wish I could end this tale on that cheerful note, but life's got a funny way of throwing you a curveball. So, as I stepped into my house, still riding the waves of that euphoria, I had no clue what was lurking in the shadows. A year flew by and I found myself following the same old routine whenever boredom or anger got the best of me. I'd grab my bag, make my way to that secret spot, and start whistling and singing, using the echoes to soothe my soul. It was my escape, my haven, and I held on to it dearly. But then, one fateful day, as I lay in my bedroom, I drifted into a peculiar dream. In this dream, I encountered a figure with no defining features, just a shadow and a voice that could chill your bones. This shadowy entity spoke, its words dripping with a horrifying tone. Stop it said, the anger in its voice palpable though its face remained an enigma. The only thing I knew was that it wanted me to cease my whistling. It was eerie, to say the least. The mere sound of that command sent a shiver down my spine. I couldn't fathom who or what this shadow was and why it harbored such a deep resentment for my whistling. But one thing was for sure, it left me with an unsettling feeling, and I couldn't shake it off, not even after I woke up. I woke up early, around five in the morning, my routine leading me to offer my Fajr prayer. But that unsettling dream still haunted my thoughts. What had it meant? Who was that enigmatic figure? I tried to brush it off as mere fatigue, perhaps just a nightmarish illusion that would fade with the day. My workday passed without any major incidents, the mundane tasks absorbing my attention. As the day drew to a close and the weekend lay ahead, a peculiar idea took root in my mind. Why not spend the night at my cherished hideaway? With that thought in mind, I made my way back to the secret place. The place had a calming effect, like a balm for my soul, and I was prepared to savor it. With everything set up, I lay on the ground, gazing at the vast expanse of the night sky, the stars twinkling brightly, and the moon casting its gentle glow. Unable to resist the urge, I reached for my trusty whistle and began to play it. But this time, the memory of that unsettling dream lingered like a shadow in the back of my mind. As I continued to whistle, the night remained peaceful, uninterrupted. The stars stood their ground, and the moon maintained its celestial vigil. It was just me, the night, and my whistle's tune. Then, as I eventually set the whistle down, an eerie and disconcerting response emerged from the darkness. A distant, otherworldly whistle reverberated through the silence. It was as though something, or someone, unseen and unknown, was now echoing my every note. The chill that ran down my spine was impossible to ignore, and the sense of unease settled in, casting a shadow over my once tranquil sanctuary. I tried to rationalize it, thinking maybe it was just my mind playing tricks on me. It couldn't be real, right? So I lay back, munching on my snacks, and gazing at the night sky. But once again, that eerie whistle echoed through the silence, and this time, there was no denying it. 
It was a sound, not a figment of my imagination. Fear began to creep in, but I pushed it aside, convincing myself that perhaps there was someone else out there, like me, doing the same thing, watching from the shadows and mimicking my actions. With that thought, I decided to call it a night and head back home. I didn't want to linger any longer in that unsettling atmosphere. As I settled into my bed, the exhaustion began to overtake me. But then, as I closed my eyes, I felt something inexplicable. It was as if an invisible weight pressed down on my chest, a presence that seemed intent on burying me in my own bed. Fear clawed at me once more, and sleep remained elusive in the face of this eerie sensation. Fear gripped me like a vice, and I felt like I was in the midst of a sweltering hell. Despite my room being at its usual slightly chilly temperature, I was burning up, sweat pouring down my face. I couldn't bear it any longer, and my eyes snapped open. What I beheld sent shivers down my spine, my heart pounding in my chest. There, perched atop me, was a ghastly figure, a grotesque semblance of a skeleton, frail and haggard like an old man, with skin and bones laid bare. His hair was a tangled mess, and yet no discernible features graced his face. It was as though he were just an embodiment of dread. The only glimpse I had into his form was his eyes, blood red, like the deepest crimson. His presence weighed on me, his ragged breath a haunting soundtrack to this nightmare. These moments felt like hours, my heart pounding, terror gripping me. And then, in a voice that sent shivers down my spine, he spoke, each word laden with malevolence. I told you to stop whistling, he hissed. You didn't listen. Now you'll bear the consequences of your disobedience. Struggling against the oppressive presence on my chest, I attempted to recite the Quran out loud, but my voice barely escaped my trembling lips. The weight bore down on me, making me feel like I was sinking deeper into an abyss. My body burned with an unrelenting heat, and every breath grew more labored. In the midst of this terrifying ordeal, a grim realization crept into my thoughts. Perhaps this was the day I would meet my end. The minutes dragged on, a never-ending battle for my life, my struggle against the malevolent figure pressing me into the bed. Summoning every ounce of strength I could muster, I began to recite verses from the Quran. It was as if a flicker of hope in the darkness, a plea for salvation. Miraculously, a sense of ease washed over me, and the relentless pressure began to lift. I glanced at my watch, and to my astonishment, I realized that all of this had unfolded in mere seconds. However, what I didn't yet grasp was that this was merely the opening act of a nightmarish ordeal that lay ahead. One day I was at a coffee shop, having a casual chat and some laughs with my friend. Just a typical day. But something unusual caught my eye. There was a guy sitting all alone at a table, and he was watching me with unwavering focus. His eyes never blinked, and he seemed to exist in a world of his own, as if everyone around him, the other patrons, and even the waitstaff didn't notice him at all. The only thing I could be sure of was that this guy had his sights locked on me. I decided to excuse myself to the bathroom, as nature called. As I stood in front of the sink, washing my hands and glancing at my reflection in the mirror, that's when things took a bizarre turn. In the mirror, I wasn't alone. I could see the man standing right behind me. With every blink of my eye, he crept closer. It was as if he intended to bite me, and I could see his mouth opening wide in an eerie and unsettling manner. I quickly spun around to confront him, and his face was inches from mine, his sharp, pointed teeth inches away, ready to strike. I couldn't control it. I started screaming like a mad person, shielding my head as I desperately tried to avoid seeing that man. I was terrified and just wanted to protect myself. My screams echoed through the bathroom and soon, people from the coffee shop rushed in, drawn by the commotion. But my fear was consuming me and I was convinced that if anyone touched me, it would be the man himself. I let out another ear-piercing scream, keeping my eyes tightly shut. I heard them talking, their voices filled with worry and fear. I couldn't bring myself to explain what I had just witnessed. It was too bizarre, too horrifying to put into words. 
So I made a quick decision to leave and head home. As I walked away, the man's sinister voice echoed in my mind, haunting me. I warned you not to whistle, but you didn't listen. Now you have to face the consequences of your actions. I couldn't escape his words. They replayed in my ears like a relentless echo. I tried to cover my ears, but it was no use. His voice, eerie and chilling, continued to haunt me, whispering his warning over and over again. In my desperation, I started screaming again and again, just to drown out the sound of his sinister words. My screams became a shield, muffling his dreadful voice, but I kept screaming until my own voice gave out. Exhausted and terrified, I finally made it home and immediately shared the bizarre ordeal with my family. They knew I wasn't the type to make up strange stories to frighten them. They trusted me. My mom, concerned for my well-being, went into the kitchen to make a soothing drink and started reciting Quranic verses to calm me down. It worked, and a sense of relief washed over me as I tried to put the bizarre events behind me. My mom even promised to prepare something to eat. As I settled down, attempting to regain my composure, a new horror unfolded. I heard the sound of whistling again, but this time it came from behind me. I realized the sound was emanating from outside the house and a shiver ran down my spine. The nightmare was far from over. I was frozen in fear, as if my very bones had turned to ice. The hairs on my body stood on end, and I was too afraid to turn around. I couldn't move a muscle, not even to look behind me. The man began to whistle once more, the eerie sound growing louder and louder. This time, though, it wasn't just the whistle. I could hear someone else, a person yelling, and they kept repeating my name. Jasmine, with a voice that sent shivers down my spine. I couldn't bear it any longer. The voices were maddening, relentless. I let out a deafening scream, hoping to drown them out. But the voices persisted, tormenting me. I couldn't take it any longer, and in my desperation, I dashed to the kitchen where my mom was. I saw a knife in her hand, and I contemplated cutting off my own ears just to escape the nightmare. The sounds were horrifying, and I was at my breaking point. It was only because my mom was there that I didn't go through with it. My mom cried out for my brothers, and they rushed to hold me back, preventing me from harming myself. The torment had pushed me to the edge, and I was teetering on the brink of insanity. The compulsion that had taken over me, urging me to cut my own ears, was an experience beyond anything I had ever encountered. It felt as if an external force, something malevolent, was attempting to control me, to force me into a state of suffering. The whistling sounds grew increasingly intense, and the voices that accompanied them were unrelenting in their encouragement for me to carry out the disturbing act. My brother had to hold me firmly, fearing that I might harm myself, while my mother was caught in a whirlwind of emotions, her eyes filled with tears as she grappled with the distressing situation. In that tumultuous moment, I felt utterly lost, unable to comprehend the bizarre compulsion that had taken hold of me. It was only through the explanations provided by my family that I began to piece together the disturbing intentions that had consumed me. In response, my mother took a pivotal decision and called upon a sheikh, a respected religious leader. The sheikh's arrival was swift, and I entered the room where he awaited. With his right hand placed gently on my head, he commenced reciting verses from the Quran. In hushed tones, he shared with me his understanding of the situation. The Sheikh assured me that I was not possessed by an evil spirit, a common misconception. Instead, I had inadvertently crossed paths with a jinn, a supernatural being. In my ignorance, I had harmed this jinn, provoking its wrath and its malevolent retaliation. The Sheikh then shed light on a troubling reality. My neglect in protecting myself through prayer had rendered me susceptible to the jinn's influence. As time unfolded, the voices that had tormented me gradually faded away, one by one, until they were no longer audible. I had found solace and reprieve through the recitation of the Quran and fervent prayer, fortifying myself with supplications for protection. I made a solemn vow never to return to the place where these sinister events had transpired, a promise I have steadfastly upheld to this day. The ordeal had transformed my perspective on spirituality and the unseen world, 
leaving me with a profound awareness of the importance of safeguarding oneself through faith and prayer. This is the end of today's story. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for more. See you soon.